We love making pizzas in this house. Everyone gets involved in rolling out the dough, choosing their own toppings, arguing about who's is best. But even though we can't have friends to join us this time, we're still gonna have loads of fun with our own pizza party. Now for the dough, most recipes will tell you to use 500 grams of strong bread flour, but I find with teenagers in the house, it's not quite enough to make four pizzas. So I'm gonna go with 750 grams of flour. To that, I'm gonna add 10 grams of yeast, and I'll put the full recipe in the link below. You need about three teaspoons to make up 10 grams, and then a generous teaspoon of table salt. And then just give that a little stir together and then make it well in the centre of your bowl. Now for the water, you want the water to be at body temperature and the way to tell is just to put your finger in. You shouldn't notice any difference. So in that goes. And I'm just gonna bring it together loosely with my spatula before we start kneading. And if you don't want to make the pizza yourself, you could always use ready-made pizza bases or you could use a ciabatta cut half horizontally. That works really well just to top it. Or you can even use puff pastry. Just open out the sheet and cut it into rectangles to make little pizza tartlets. Right, now just tip this out onto the table. We're gonna knead the dough. And what you want is a slightly sticky dough. Much better, I think, to have it a little bit too wet than too dry. I find this part of making a dough really, really therapeutic. I really enjoy it. I find 10 minutes of quiet time in the kitchen on my own, just to knead, have a bit of peace and calm. Now I've been kneading the dough for a few minutes and it's really nice and soft. And if you can, avoid adding too much flour because that will dry it out. You want to make sure it's nice and smooth and elastic. And if you press it with your thumb, it should bounce back. And then pour some oil into the bowl and then just turn it around making sure it's well coated in the oil. And then pop a tea towel on the top and leave it to proof for about an hour or so. We'd like it to rise towards the top of the bowl. So the dough is ready and it's risen nicely and my helpers are here. Are you ready for the reveal? Yes. Ta-da! Okay, I'm just going to quickly knead it just to get rid of the air. It feels really nice and soft. Can I feel it? Yeah, you feel it. <laughs> now there's still some oil on it, which will help to make it rolling out. Noise is, what's the air escapes, it sort of pops, doesn't it? Now, I'm going to cut this roughly into four pieces because we've got to make one for Dad. You still want a pizza? Oh, yes. <laughs> he still wants a pizza. Now, start by making a ball. So just bring it together. If you look at what I'm doing, Cass, and you pull it inwards, it'll come together to make like a little cushion. Rolling pin's ready. I've got some semolina here. You've used semolina before. It's just coarse flour, and that causes a bit of friction, which I think helps the dough, rather than being sticky, it helps it sort of move. One tip I'll give you, when you're rolling your dough, try and keep it moving. Don't let it stick to the surface, otherwise it'll really stretch when you pull it out. Okay, so, do you want to help yourself to a little bit of semolina? What's your favourite topping to go on a pizza, Cass? Well, I like parm ham, but you put that on after the after it's baked. Yeah, you do. That's true. It's, I also you, really like olives on pizza. You, you're not very exciting, really, when it comes to pizza, are you? <laughs> Is there any combination that you think shouldn't be ever put on a pizza? Like, oh, I was going to say that. Yeah. Would you never put pineapple on a pizza? Would you? But ham and pineapple together, salt and sweet. No, no, no. Now, is your pizza stuck? Uh, no. It's not. No. Oh, good. That looks great, Fab. Mm -hmm. That's going to be thin and crispy. I would move it around, and the oil will make it a bit crispy on the base as well. Move it around a bit with your hand. I'm going to do the same. So we're going to be using a tin. Now, Fabio, you don't want to get your pizza base to be bigger than the tin. And the reason we use a tin is because they're really thin, 
so they heat up really quickly. So you need to get the oven as hot as you can make it and then pop it onto the tin and the tin has got holes in. This is my favourite one because it's got really small holes in. So the air will get through so the pizza base gets crispy but the holes aren't so big that you're going to push the dough through. You have that one then Fabio. Now you can make your own tomato sauce or you might not even want a tomato sauce at all. You might prefer to have a plain pizza or maybe use a white sauce. You two like plain tomato sauces though, don't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so just to save time, we're going to be using passata, which is just sieved tomatoes. This one's got a bit of basil in it. Ooh. Do you want to pour it in, Fabio, and then you can start on your base? And one thing to say, try not to get it onto the edges because that will just burn when it goes into the oven. Well. Yeah, and it will just sort of go a bit black if it's got too much on. You happy with that one, Robert? Oh, yes. And I'll do mine. Be happy with that. <laughs> no. All right then, are you ready to start your toppings? I think so. And maybe just run it out. I think maybe you could go a little bit closer. Let's have well, should we cheese first. Can you cut my spoon? I can. You've got mozzarella there, olives, chorizo for you, some chilies. And then you're gonna put parma ham on when it comes out. This is vegan, it's mozzarella style cheese. I really like to freeze pizza. You can freeze just the dough itself, or at this stage, bake it for about five minutes, just until it's pale golden, and then freeze it flat. And then you can just stack them into a freezer bag and they're absolutely perfect for just topping and cooking from frozen. Our pizzas are ready to go in the oven. Which one do you think, Robert? This is yours. I like that one the best. This one? Who likes that one the best? Me. What about this one? I like this one the best. This is mine. Anchovy capers, a bit of oregano. I might go crazy and put three olives on it. Wow. Not three olives? Yeah. Oh, I know what none of us used. Red chilli. Oh, I'd like that last red chilli. Now, Robert, you're in danger of overloading yours. Do they look great or what? They do. I think they look fabulous. Mine is, yeah, we've all... Mine is the best. We've all agreed mine is the best. No, we haven't. <laughs> we've all agreed. Okay, but we all know deep down that it's mine. Uh, no, it's, it's <laughs> right, listen, I'm going to cook the pizzas now. The ovens are hot. You two, wash your hands, set the table. Go. Cass, yours is here. <gasps> Looks fantastic. What do you think about that? You're going to put your palm ham on? Fabio, yours looks fantastic. Come on, quick. Quick, get on with it, because mine's nearly ready. Here's yours, Rob. What do you think? Yes, yes. You like that? And here's mine, the best one of all. So just a few basil leaves, and we're all ready to go. So, who's the winner? Mine. Mine. Definitely mine. Dad's is definitely yeah. not the winner. Well, look at mine. Well, there's not much of yours left, is there? Come on, Robert. Ready.